Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. So this is gonna be a bit of a special video and one I did a lot of research for, so I hope you enjoy it. The question is, is medical school today harder than it was 15 years ago? And I'll mostly be comparing 2002 and 2017, but I will be incorporating other years when I couldn't find data. The reason I chose 15 years ago was basically that's when this trend I'm about to show you started. It's a pretty consistent trend. Before that, things get really wonky and also it's harder to compare before that because there are totally different MCAT standards, etc. So I'm using 2002 because it is comparable. So with that out of the way, you know I'm not trying to manipulate you or anything. This is the data I could find and I think it's a good comparison. So let's just get right into it. First, let's compare the number of applicants and matriculants in 2002 and 2017. So applicants are basically anyone who applied to medical school that year and matriculants are the ones who got a spot or were accepted into medical school. So first let's compare the number of applicants. As you can see from the data, there are way more applicants in 2017 with 51,680 than in 2002 where there were only 33,624. That is a huge increase in the number of applicants. That is a 54% increase. Meanwhile, the number of matriculants went from 16,488 to 21,338. So there's a 29% increase in the number of matriculants since 2002. Let's dissect this data a little bit. So why are there more matriculants? Why are there more medical school spots in 2017? That's because in 2006, the AAMC called for a 30% increase in medical school enrollment through boosting enrollment at existing schools and also creating new medical schools. However, the increase in medical school applicants is far outweighing the increase in seats available. And to make matters worse, the number of applications per applicant is also increasing. So it's went from 14 in 2011 to 16 in 2017. So what do these numbers signify about the matriculation rate, which is a good measure of how competitive it is to get into medical school. So the matriculation rate in 2002 was 49%, while in 2017, that's dropped to 41%. So not only are more applicants getting rejected today than 2002, but a larger percentage of applicants are getting rejected today as well. So why is that? Are people just less competitive today and people are getting rejected because they don't deserve a seat? Well, that's not what the statistics show. If we look at the average GPA for applicants in 2002, it is 3.46, while today the average applicant has a GPA of 3.56. And if we're looking at matriculants who are considered competitive because they were able to get into medical school, the average GPA for a matriculant in 2002 was 3.61, while today it's 3.71. With the number of people applying in the tens of thousands, that's a really significant increase in GPA. So could it be that grades are easier to get today than in the past? Are colleges handing out free A's and everyone has a super high GPA? So to test this, let's look at the MCAT score, which is a standardized test. The MCAT has changed in 2015. So to make a direct fair comparison, let's compare 2002 to 2014. As we can see from the data, the average applicant in 2002 had an MCAT score of 27, while a matriculant had an MCAT score of 29.6. In 2014, however, the average applicant has an MCAT score of 28.6, while the MCAT score for a matriculant is a whopping 31.4. That's a very significant increase across the board. This increase in competitiveness is even more obvious if you take into account the number of people that are taking the MCAT. As a simple hypothetical example, if you have only 10,000 students taking the MCAT, to be in the top 3,000 students, you only need to be in the 70th percentile. Meanwhile, if 100,000 students are taking the MCAT, to be in the top 3,000 students, you need to be in the 97th percentile. So statistics wise, students are getting more competitive, yet they're getting rejected more. Could there be some other factors in play? Let's have a look at those. One thing that's changing is that students are applying later. In 2013, according to AAMC's matriculating student questionnaire, 57% of people took a gap year. Now in 2017, that number has increased to 62.6%. So more people today are taking time off and taking gap years 
to strengthen their application and get more extracurricular experiences under their belt. And related to that, this is anecdotal. I mean, it's really hard to find statistics on this, but I think most people would agree that the extracurriculars done today are far more extensive than people have done in the past. Basically you need to be a full-blown researcher, multiple publications, uh, invent the cure to cancer, thousands of- Six and a half hours later. And this makes sense because, again, more people taking gap years and more people with similar GPAs and MCATs, what are you gonna differentiate them with? The answer is extracurriculars. This conclusion is actually pretty insane. Not only are more people applying, but more competitive people are applying yet they're still getting in at a significantly smaller rate than they have in the past. So why is all of this important for you to know? Well, there's a couple of reasons. This leads to many qualified students who would have made great doctors and would have actually been accepted in the past, now being rejected and turned away from medical school. With everybody yelling about the doctor shortage in America, maybe we should consider getting these qualified students into medical schools. All of these trends with GPA increases, MCAT increases, matriculating rate decreases, they've been pretty consistent since 2002. If this trend continues going on, I don't think it is really sustainable. We could possibly expect a backlash and less people pursue medicine or a highly negative perception develops towards the process. Also advisors, parents, etc., who are not aware of this trend may push you into a hyper competitive space based on their own very different experiences with medical school and the system. To solve this, we need to make medical schools at a faster rate and allow more people into existing medical schools. And obviously there are a lot of concerns with that, money, whatnot, and we need to address those. There needs to be more money allocated towards this goal in making more medical schools and medical school seats, and also more money put towards any blockades we can expect. A lot of people note that there's gonna be an issue with residencies then, if there's more medical students, but not enough residency spots. Well, we should get more residency spots as well, which again, means we need more funding there. It's a complicated issue, but I think it's one that we can and should solve before things get too ugly. With all this depressing stuff, there is a positive note that's not related to it really, but here it is. More women than men have enrolled in medical school for the first time ever, which is a huge deal. So there's a happy fact of the day, right? Back to depression. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I put a lot of work toward it. If you did enjoy it, please subscribe and check out my other videos. I'm sure you'll enjoy them. Or subscribe if you wanna see future content like this. Please let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you next time.